What up, what up, what up? Hello, guys. It is Rules for Rebels with episode 33 of Side Hustle Tuesdays. So I uh, apologize for getting this out so late. It's 11.27 p.m. Chicago time here. And uh, man, what a day, what a day, what a day. So uh, my air conditioner went out today. Uh, it's going to be 97 degrees here in Chicago tomorrow. So I uh, spent uh, pretty much most of the afternoon and the evening trying to get that fixed, and it's not fixed in time. And uh, then as I was getting ready to crank out this episode, my computer froze on me and uh, I lost everything I'd written up. So uh, been an interesting day thus far, but I uh, got everything ready to go. It's a little bit later than I expected, but let's, uh, let's get rolling with this. So in today's episode, we're going to be sharing the story of a 19-year-old college student who started a successful graphic design business and Amazon merch business. Uh, one funny thing today's side hustler shared with me, his name's Tim, by the way is that his journey all began way, way back in the day when he was playing Mario Paint as a kid. I thought that was kind of funny. So for those of you guys who don't remember, it was a Super uh, Super Nintendo game where you colored in like virtual coloring books. And I think you could even get like some type of like external like drawing pad that you could sketch on. Uh, but Tim, that's where he kind of first fell in love with like visual layouts and graphic design. And one thing I absolutely love about this business and this story that we're going to be sharing with you today is that a successful business started out of a failure of another business. So in some past episodes, as well as on the channel in general, we talk about how often you have to fail your way to success. So the same way uh, no kid gets on a bike and starts riding for the first time without falling, those falls and scraped knees are just something that you have to do to learn how to ride a bike. It's part of the process. The same way as those failures are necessary, typically failures are also necessary in business. So Failures show us what works and what doesn't work. They help us learn what we're good at and what we aren't. Uh, and oftentimes, it's a failed business that leads to our next successful idea. So Tim Krug is a 19-year-old college student. Uh, Tim has always enjoyed drawing and art and graphic design. Uh, and as a teenager, he played around with a free program called GIMP. And after he mastered that, he actually wound up borrowing some money from his mother to buy Photoshop and continued to learn the program and teach himself design. So Tim had seen uh, the uber popularity of phone apps and games like Angry Birds and Flappy Birds and others, and Tim wanted to try to roll out his own phone app, you know, video game. Uh, and while Tim was a great designer and had characters sketched up and everything, he did not know the first thing about how to code or program uh, a phone app or a phone game. So he reached out to some programmers but found that the fees they charged were just too steep. So through doing some research online, Tim learned about a website called Flippa, um, and I may or may not have talked about Flippa before, but if you ever have a domain to sell, if you ever have an established e-commerce uh, store to sell, um, or if you have an app that you're looking to sell, Flippa can be a great place to sell it. Flippa is also a place where you can buy all these types of services as well. So uh, like I said, people can sell domains, uh, websites, even apps and games. And I was actually kind of surprised when I browsed through here, like how cheap some people are selling apps for, like even just a couple hundred bucks. So Tim found an app game uh, for a couple hundred bucks. He purchased it from the designer. Now Tim's ultimate plan was to maintain the same concept for the game, but he wanted to try to hire a designer to replace the characters in the game with his own characters that he had created. And I'm, I'm not super knowledgeable about app design, but basically like all... Not all, but most app games are either based on like physics, which would be like an Angry Bird or something like that. There's running games like Subway Surfer and, and some of those other ones. But most phone app games are all kind of based around the same type of, you know, the same handful of type of games and the same type of technology. So it would have been, you know, Tim thought it might be pretty easy to just swap out the characters. Anyhow, this, of course, required money, which Tim didn't have. And Tim wanted a way to raise money. So as he was exploring ways to raise money to get his game going... Uh, he learned about a site called Amazon Merch. Now, Amazon Merch is a program you probably all know about. Uh, we talk about it a lot on this channel. And one thing that you may not know is Am Amazon Merch initially started out as a way for game designers to get swag or merchandise made featuring the characters from their games. So if you look at the Amazon Merch site, you'll see a lot of references to promoting your shirts on phone apps. And while today Merch has become much bigger and much more widespread than that, and available to people who aren't game designers. That's actually what it started out as, was a way for game designers to, to monetize their games by selling t-shirts featuring their characters um, from the game. So Tim got into Amazon Merch early, so he had no problems getting accepted. He was one of the, you know, probably within the first like three months of, of Merch opening up, he was on there. And he started making t-shirt designs featuring his game's characters. Now, 
Due to the low number of downloads and very little traffic on the game, it never really took off. And eventually, Tim kind of just wound up abandoning that game. And when his hosting package expired, he just didn't bother to, uh, to renew it. So that's not where the story ends, though. As we mentioned, Tim always had more skill as well as more interest in graphic design than he did in app game design. Uh, so Tim got started making t-shirts uh, to sell on Amazon merch. Now, sales were slow, but he was making a few bucks off you know, the shirt sales that slowly trickled in. The problem Tim had, however, was tearing up. Tim had more designs than he had design slots available for Amazon. So one day at a family get-together uh, for his uncle's birthday, Tim was chatting with his uncle, and uh, Tim's uncle had made a comment about the shirt he was wearing, and it just so happened to be an American Apparel shirt from Amazon merch that Tim had actually designed. So when Tim's uncle asked him about the shirt, Tim told him that he had designed it. Uh, Tim's uncle just so happened to own a small local brewery, and he liked the design so much he asked to use it on some of his t-shirts that he sold in the tasting room. Now, Tim's uncle could have probably ordered these shirts from a larger printer and gotten a better price, but he wanted to help Tim, so he agreed to pay Tim $1 over what his merch base price was, uh, which was somewhere around $13, and he ordered 25 shirts just to kind of, you know, start it off and see how they sold. Well, Tim was pretty psyched to have made $25 off his designs. Obviously, the guy ordered 25 shirts. He made a buck a shirt. He made 25 bucks. And uh, while Tim didn't even realize it at the time, this was just a push he needed to tear up. So after that sale, Tim teared up to the next level of shirts, which was 100. Another nice side effect of that 25-piece order was that his shirt got a huge bump in BSR score as well as Amazon ranking and also began selling a few organically as well. So fast forward about a year and a half, two years later, Tim's Amazon merch sales are going well. And while he's not doing Glenn from Hustler Hacks numbers, pushing 5K a month in profits, his sales typically fluctuate between $1,250 and as much as $2,000 um, on a good month, maybe around Christmas time or, or during a holiday like 4th of July or St. Patty's Day when, when shirts tend to sell really well. Uh, so he's making some decent money. But it's not just merch sales. Tim's also making money off his actual design skills and by offering graphic design as well. Uh, Tim continues to do a lot of shirts as well as designs for his uncle's craft brewery. He does the growlers, he does cans, mugs, koozies, t-shirts, and all types of other swag. And he even designs the, uh, the labels on some of the beer cans that uh, Tim's uncle makes. Now, Tim's uncle pays him $250 per design. And the nice thing about the craft beer industry, and especially smaller breweries, is that like every season they're coming out with different seasonal beers. So that means there's plenty of design work available to Tim. So not only that, but also many small craft breweries don't have a kitchen and don't serve food. So what they do is get like rotating food trucks to park outside the brewery to provide food and snacks to people who are doing tastings and, you know, hanging out drinking and things like that. And Tim also picked up a few gigs through some of his uncle's friends, designing uh, or like doing the graphic design work for the truck reps or the car reps that go around these food trucks. Uh, he's designed a couple of their websites, and he's even designed the layouts and the design of their menus. Uh, he's also making some shirts and swag for those guys as well. So Tim's making a cool two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars a month doing something he loves to do, uh, which is a combination of Amazon merch as well as offering graphic design services. And not only is his merch business continuing to grow, uh, the freelancing gigs he's doing for his uncle and his friends are also continuing to grow as well. Uh, now, some of the things I really liked about today's story, not only does it involve merch and beer, two great things, uh, it's about someone failing their way to success. So Tim's initial venture of having the phone app didn't quite work out, but had he not ventured into that, he would have made, never started making t-shirts. Had he never started making t-shirts, his... Uh, his uncle would have never seen the t-shirts and he would have never, you know, kind of found his way at, at the ripe young age of 19 uh, into a career that he loves and is able to make money doing. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, another interesting thing about this side hustle. Uh, another interesting thing that this side hustle really highlights is the fact that if you can promote and push your merch shirts off of Amazon, it's just additional sales channels for you. So just for example, if you, you know, if you're sitting back just relying on Amazon to send you organic traffic, yeah, you can do okay with doing that. And yeah, Amazon's going to bring you some sales. But what if you also took those same t-shirt designs and listed them on Merch, and, or I'm sorry, on Redbubble and Teespring and T-Chip? What if you also took those t-shirt designs and listed them on eBay and Etsy? You're now on two different sales platforms. If a shirt sells on eBay or if a shirt sells on Etsy, you simply use Amazon Merch as your drop shipper drop ship that t-shirt to your customer. If you want to try to make a couple bucks off the actual sale, you can do that. 
Uh, other people choose to basically sell their uh, their shirts at break even price just to kind of spur more sales. You know, even if I sell 10 shirts on Etsy and I don't make a single penny besides covering my actual costs, that's 10 more shirts I am closer to tearing up to the next level. That's 10 shirts that's going to raise my uh, my BSR, or my best seller rating on those shirts. That's 10 shirts um, increasing my sales rank, which is going to help them sell more and sell better uh, organically on Amazon. Uh, so that's another tip that uh, that I thought this uh, today's side hustle kind of really did a good job of pointing out. So anyhow, guys, that is today's story. Uh, I apologize uh, for getting it out so late and a little bit rushed, but better late than never. Uh, anyhow, guys, hope you enjoyed the story. Until next time, Rules for Rebels and Side Hustle Tuesdays, signing off.